Friends, Faith and Love. This is how Frederica Fliedner once summarized the qualities that, in her opinion, are necessary for a life pleasing to God. Like her future husband, Frederica also suffered a difficult childhood. She lost her mother early and was the eldest to run the household at home. Despite her father's remarriage, young Frederica's help remained essential for the family. She originally worked in nursing, but then trained to become a teacher. At the age of 26, she took a job at the Protestant Rescue Center for Orphans in Dusselthal, where she worked for two years. As a young woman, Frederica was influenced by the revival movement. Their followers believed that they would be able to see the glory of Christ after death through an absolutely selfless, religiously motivated commitment to their fellow human beings. Pretty cool, huh? V E D He. Fleetner Frederica's unselfish spirit and act of charity exerted great attraction on Theodor Fleetner. Just a few weeks after they met, he proposed marriage to her in 1828. Practical help for those in need began soon. In 1833, the first woman released from prison was initially temporarily housed in the parish garden house. This first step was soon followed by a larger one. In 1837, Frederica became head of the Deaconess Institution. The actual candidate had proven to be unsuitable. E. The Fliegner couple had ten children, but only three of them reached adulthood. Yeah. Physically exhausted from the strain of work and family, Frederica Fliegner died in 1842 at the age of 42 as a result of the premature birth of her 11th child. Oh. January 21, 1800, Epstein, Townis, to October 4, 1864, Kaisersworth, Theodor Fliegner knew what poverty was. After his father's early death, the large family in which he grew up was dependent on support from relatives. With the help of a scholarship, Theodor was able to realize his dream to become a pastor like his father. However, his first pastorate was extremely unattractive and Kaisersworth was on the verge of ruin. The young priest fought doggedly to preserve his community. On a 14-month collection trip to Holland and England, he collected the money necessary to save the community. HTH and N the we at the Fleetner returned from this trip change. He was deeply impressed by the prisoner care provided by the British Quaker Elizabeth Fry and the Mennonite community nurses working in Holland. He decided to help himself. He saw the Christian faith as the means to save those in need and to improve the world. The It Much Spee soon helped detention pref helper of humanity Theodor Lilac F-L-I-E-D-N-E-R not to. Theodor Fliedner began his social work in Kaiserswerth in 1833 with an asylum for women released from prison. In 1836, he finally founded the Kaiserswerth Deaconess Institute. By reviving the early Christian deaconess office, he found the selfless carers he needed for his work. However, there was always a lack of money. Theodor Fliedner spent a lot of his time raising donations. Ona NDNDE Care ND Kloss, Kaisersworth soon became a place of comprehensive help. Deaconesses cared for people in the hospital. Those released from prison were prepared for an honorable life and children were taught at school. Fliedner always aimed to alleviate the actual need, but he always wanted to lead people to faith or bring them back through his relief work. Men auxiliary, even his poor health, did not stop Fliedner from traveling to distant countries to set up stations abroad. This led to the establishment of additional deaconess houses in Germany and abroad. Caroline Berthaud was born in 1811 under unfavorable conditions. Her hometown of Hamburg was occupied by the French. Her father, a wine merchant, suffered enormous losses due to the invasion of French troops. Nevertheless, she received a good education. Emily Sipking, one of the pioneers of Protestant social work, taught Caroline free of charge. This gave her an independent and self-determined future. Through Emily Sipking, the young Caroline came into contact with the Christian revival movement. In 1840, she took over supervision of the female surgical department in the Hamburg General Hospital and was therefore responsible for 25 nursing staff. Here, after the death of his first wife, looking for a mother for his children and a new head, Theodor Fliegner proposed marriage to Caroline. Z1. Caroline's vows took her to Kaiserswerth in 1843. A strenuous life full of responsibility awaited her there. She was a mother, not only to the ever-growing number of deaconesses, but also to her own eight children and three stepchildren. 
For Theodor Fliedner, work in the Deaconess Institution was his top priority. While Caroline hoped for affection and passion from him, Theodor thought otherwise. Greater than eternally one in him, was his suggestion for the engraving of her wedding rings. For Theodor, church social work, the kingdom of God, was always in the foreground. Her after Theodor's death in 1864, it was Caroline's job to secure his life's work. At the same time, however, she took advantage of new freedom. In 1869 she traveled to the Orient, and in 1889 she visited her son Friedrich in Madrid. After resigning as head of the Deaconess Institution in 1883, she died in 1892. She is buried next to her husband in the Kaiserswerth Deaconess Cemetery. responsibility and a deep sense of community shaped them and determined their future life. As a seven-year-old, she had a calling experience to put her life in the service of God. Against her parents' wishes, she decided at the age of 20 to dedicate her life to the poor and the sick. A.S. in the following year, she dealt with nursing theoretically and practically and visited various hospitals in Rome, Paris, and London. Two visits to Kaiserswerth were particularly important for her. The first visit, which only lasted a few days, impressed her so much that she published her own report about it, the institution of Kaiserswerth on the Rhine. In order to get to know the particularly humane attention to patients better, she lived with the sisters in Kaiserswerth for almost three months in 1851. The conversations with the Fliedner couple and the encounters with the sisters shaped their social diagonal thinking and actions. V-N-S-N-A-C <laughs> of nursing from 1854, during the Crimean War, she used her nursing experience to organize the British hospital system. This work, symbolized by the image of the always caring lady with the lamp, made her known and famous far beyond England. Mm -hmm. Their overriding principle was professional concern and care for the sick. This also became a role model for selfless help. With the secular nursing school she founded and with her own nursing textbook, Notes on Nursing, 1860, she laid the foundation for regulated training in secular nursing in Great Britain and for the planned expansion of the healthcare system. At the same time, it gave women the opportunity to start their own careers. In 1975, the new building of the Kaiserswerther Diakani Hospital was named after the famous student Florence Nightingale. <laughs> 